Alan, one of the great perennial questions of human beings throughout all history, and it applies to us today, is to look around at our universe, see it in a remarkable way that we understand today more than ever before, and ask, did it have a beginning? How do we think about that question? Well, in the first instance, we look at what the universe is doing today and try to extrapolate backwards. Uh, when we do that, we see the universe is expanding today. Uh, when we extrapolate that backwards, it gets smaller and smaller and ultimately, presumably, came from something extremely small and dense. Uh, there was a theory that was popular in the 1950s called the steady state model, which understood that the universe is expanding, but instead of having the universe get smaller as time goes on, simply proposed that as the universe expanded, more and more matter was created, so that the density of matter was always the same, even with the expansion. Uh, that idea fell apart with the discovery in 1964, I guess it was, of the cosmic background radiation, which we can only interpret as being the afterglow of the heat that would have been there if we had the compression version of the Big Bang, mm. with everything getting hotter and denser as you go backwards. Uh, so that theory became what we now call the conventional Big Bang theory, uh, that the universe began in a hot, dense state and it has been expanding ever since. And by understanding the physical processes involved, and there's not much to understand here, really, uh, the model of the Big Bang really only incorporates the physics of simple gravity. Uh, one normally uses general relativity, but in fact, you can use Newtonian gravity even, and you get pretty much the same answer. Uh, and then one just models an expanding gas uh, and talks about how fast that would thin out and cool, and one calculates everything in terms of that, and it works very well. Uh, and it allows you to calculate the age of the universe in terms of present parameters, like how fast the universe is expanding today. Uh, that now has been measured quite accurately, uh, and especially when one combines it with information from the cosmic background radiation, uh, one can now estimate the age of the universe back to this hot, dense initial state. Uh, it's said to be 13.7 billion years to an accuracy of just 0 0.2 billion years. Mm. Incredible accuracy. Mm. Now, that still leaves the question of whether or not this hot, dense state was really the beginning, or whether or not there may have been some prehistory to that. Uh, everything I've said so far is really not controversial. I think all cosmologists agree that our local universe began from a very hot, dense state approximately 13.7 billion years ago. The possible prehistory is a more controversial thing, more speculative. Uh, there certainly could have been a prehistory. Various theories predict that there probably was a prehistory. Uh, the theory that I've worked on called inflation um, seems to imply that there almost certainly was a prehistory, but still there would be a beginning someplace if inflation well, is right. Let's talk about inflation, which you modestly say you have worked on, you in fact uh, invented it, um, and perhaps as we're more and more confident we can say discovered it. <laughs> uh, how did that work briefly, and then from how it worked in our universe, what might that imply for previous universes? Right. Uh, inflation uh, is basically an attempt to explain the bang of the Big Bang, what set the universe into this period of gigantic expansion. Uh, it turns out the conventional Big Bang theory really said nothing about the Big Bang itself, <laughs> the propulsion mechanism. Uh, inflation takes advantage of ideas coming out of particle physics, uh, which tell us that at very high energy densities, there's a prediction that there should exist forms of matter which literally turn gravity on its head, causing gravity to become repulsive. Uh, so this repulsive gravity would be the driving force behind the Big Bang. The assumption would be that the early universe contained at least a small amount of this repulsive gravity material. Uh, it drove then an exponential expansion, which became the Big Bang of our universe, the driving force behind the expansion. And in this inflationary process, uh, energy and matter were in fact created and at the end of the inflation process, at least for our universe, it resulted in the spewing out of energy and particles that were developed in this process. That's correct. 
And the reason why that is consistent with the ideas of energy conservation, even though it doesn't sound that way at first, uh, is because there are both positive and negative contributions to the total energy, where the negative contribution comes from the gravitational field. It turns out that gravitational fields actually give a negative contribution to the total energy, and that the total energy of our universe is consistent with being exactly zero, with a negative contribution from gravity canceling the positive contribution uh, from all of the matter. So given this fact that inflation is so critical that it, it, it created the universe that we know and ended in our current Big Bang, how does that then suggest or help us to understand that there might have been previous universes? What is it about inflation that makes the possibility of prior universes or subsequent universes conceivable? Uh, it has to do with the way inflation ends. Uh, inflation ends, we believe, because this repulsive gravity material is fundamentally unstable. So it's like a radioactive material that just decays, where decay doesn't mean rots, it means it <laughs> turns into other kinds of materials. Uh, so like a radioactive material, we believe that this repulsive gravity material had a half-life. Uh, the decay was exponential. A certain amount of time, half of it decays, wait, the same amount of time again, half of what remains decays. But the catch here is that while it is decaying, it is continuing to exponentially expand. Uh, so it works out that if you wait one half-life of the decay, uh, half of it has disappeared, but nonetheless the half that remains is nonetheless larger, and in fact vastly larger, than in the region that you started with. Uh, so even while it's decaying, this repulsive gravity material uh, increases in volume, and will then therefore according to these theories, never disappear. They go on inflating forever with pieces of the material decaying and producing universes, which I usually refer to as pocket universes. But one of these pocket universes would be, in fact, vastly larger than our observed universe. <laughs> and our observed universe would just be a tiny piece of one pocket. Wow. And so these are uh, uh, um, uh, occurring now as a result of inflation, and, and, and we have no reason to believe necessarily that ours was the first, but Correct. I think you said that based on the same theory, we cannot extrapolate back in time infinitely the way we can into the future, is that right? That is exactly right. Uh, this process seems to predict uh, that the universe will go on with pieces of inflating forever, eternally into the future, and we refer to it as eternal inflation. Uh, but the word eternal is being used slightly loosely. Semi-eternal might be more accurate. Uh, it's eternal into the future. Uh, we do not think that it's eternal into the past. Uh, making assumptions that seem reasonable, uh, we've been able to, quote, prove mathematically uh, that it's in fact not possible to extrapolate arbitrarily far into the past. Yeah. There must somewhere, if you extrapolate backwards into the past, somewhere be the beginning of inflation. And we don't really have a solid theory of how inflation began. The ultimate theory of the origin of the universe is still very much up for grabs.